Welcome to this lecture on chronic kidney disease and drug dose adjustments. So we are going to start with understanding what is this EGFR and how is it associated with the chronic kidney disease of CKD and how can we calculate this and uh, the drug dose adjustments that are required on the basis of the condition of the patient. So the EGFR is the estimated glomerular filtration rate. So the GFR shows how well the kidneys are filtering and in CKD we know that there is a gradual loss of kidney function means the kidneys loses their function slowly which occurs over a period of months to years and the kidney loses their filtering capacity. And to assess the filtering capacity healthcare professionals estimate the GFR to assess the kidney situation and this estimated GFR is known as EGFR. In the early stages of the CKD patient usually do not show symptoms and if a patient is uh, supposed diabetic then uh, his or her kidneys usually get damaged slowly and slowly and uh, in those patients we have to estimate the EGFR to assess the kidney conditions as well as there are some other risk factors such as high BP or heart problems or stroke or obesity or if there is some family history or if patient uses tobacco or if the patient is of 60 plus years old all these are risk factors of the CKD and all in and uh, in all these cases we have to estimate EGFR to assess the kidney situation. So the GFR is calculated in ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. 1.73 is the body surface area. So the GFR, if it is 0 ml per minute to 15 ml per minute, it is known as kidney failure or renal failure. In that case, usually we require the dialysis. While it is between 15 to 59, it is known as kidney disease. While from 60 to 89 it is known as early stage kidney disease and above 90 it is normal so the value of the gfr we use this to stage the ckd so there are various stages of the ckd which starts from 1 to 3a then 3b 4 and 5 one starts with a normal kidney function but if there are possible kidney damage such as if you are finding that there, are, there is some protein in the urine then it may be the stage 1 of the CKD while stage 2 is known as mild loss 60 to 89 phase early stage renal disease while the 3 is is mild to moderate then 3b is moderate to severe then 4 is severe loss all this between 15 to 59 a difference of 15 15 15 okay so mild to moderate moderate to severe then severe loss while stage 5 is known as kidney failure or end stage renal disease now let me tell you one thing usually before the GFR is decreased below 29 that is the patient is in stage 4 or stage 5 then only we usually see the symptoms in the stage 1 to 3b usually we do not see any symptoms okay so in these phases in these stages we usually do not find symptoms symptoms usually occurs when the GFR falls below 30 ml per minute so when the GFR decreases below 30 ml per minute means in the later stages of the CKT usually the early symptom is the nocturia okay this is due to the loss of concentrating ability of the kidneys and in the later stage the patient may feel tired which may be because of renal anemia and there is swelling in his or her arms legs or feet maybe due to fluid overload 
then we can see some muscle cramps or itching or nausea and vomiting and patient may suffer from loss of appetite okay so all this is there so to diagnose the ckd we use a calculation of gfr we use the estimated gfr and to estimate the gfr we use the serum creatinine of the patient we know the serum creatinine is produced by the muscles of the patient at a constant rate and it is almost completely filtered at the glomerulus in the kidneys so it is completely filtered and is not reabsorbed so we use it to calculate the gfr of the patient and we have some very important formulas for that so these are three equations first one is the cockroft called equation or cg equation so the cg equation is a very traditional one very old one newer ones are the mdrd that is modification of diet in renal disease study equation then ckd epi which is chronic kidney disease epidemiology collaboration equation so these are three important equations which are used for calculating egfr however the mdrd and ckd are usually used so the cg equation says that in case of male it is creatinine clearance so the creatinine clearance is equals to 140 minus age in years into weight in kg upon 72 into serum creatinine of the patient in milligram per dl so it is the cg equation in case of a female patient we just multiply it with 0.85 so this is a very old equation and is no longer recommended for use okay what is recommended then mdrd and ckd epi but these equations are very complicated one these are very tough to learn as well as to calculate there are some useful websites there which are used which can be used to calculate the value of gfr It is a comparative table of CG and MDRD and CKD EPI. CKD EPI is most widely used. It, it is the most recent one. It is the one of the best one. However, for a uh, for a handmade calculation, we uh, you can use the CG equation in, in your exams also. MDRD is there. It it is not valid in many populations such as in children or or in elderly patients or with patients with some serious comorbid condition these are the websites where you can calculate such as of national kidney foundation for the cg formula or nephron.org for mdrd or national kidney foundation for ckd epi i will share the links in the description below now we will see the drug dose adjustments that are required in these renal impair patients so in case of renal impairment those drugs particularly that are renally cleared we need to adjust the dose and we adjust by calculating the gfr of the patient now it is very important because if there are some errors in the calculating of the drug dose then it may cause adverse effects if the dose is higher if it is not properly cleared from the renal from the kidneys then the toxic metabolites that are formed will accumulate in the body and may cause some serious adverse effects because after absorption we have the metabolism after the distribution then it is metabolized in the liver and when it is metabolized the toxic metabolites are formed which are renally cleared okay so if renal clearance is not well then these toxic metabolites will accumulate in the body and will cause some serious adverse effects and if you have calculated a lower dose then you will not have any effectiveness of the drug 
so it is very important to calculate the drug dose effectively and with that it is important to know that usually maintenance dosing adjustment is required because loading dose is basically based on what based on volume of distribution of the patient while the maintenance dose it depends on the renal clearance so the maintenance dose adjustment is required what we can do we can reduce the dose or we can increase the interval between two uh, doses okay or we can do both of them so the medication with uh, with very toxic metabolites should be avoided and we should use the least nephrotoxic agents and the nephrotoxic drugs such as nsaids uh, such as ibuprofen or some diclofenac all these should be avoided and aminoglycosides such as streptomycin or gentamicin all these should be avoided and one more important thing is that you can't just uh, just calculate the gfr and uh, and uh, and uh, you can decide this that uh, the dose of a particular drug uh, you will use that dose in every case you will have to make a decision on case by case basis because every case is unique in itself so you will have to adjust the dose on case by case basis and if it is and if it is required then you have to do the serum drug concentrations estimation also means therapeutic drug monitoring so if it is required then you can do some therapeutic drug monitoring also now it is a very important slide here i have shown some important drugs which should be stopped if patient is really unwell or or if the patient's condition is not getting well or it is getting worse then you should avoid these five drugs first one is the ace inhibitors then arbs angiotensin receptor blockers then nsaids then diuretics and metformin because usually the patient is diabetic so you should avoid the metformin too however you may start them again after 24 to 48 hours but these should be avoided in the ckd patient especially if patient is really unwell to learn them you can learn like this damn i should have stopped these medications damn d for diuretics a for ace inhibitors or arbs m for metformin and and for nsaids so then diuretics ace inhibitors arbs metformin and nsaids these medications should be stopped or should be used very cautiously thank you do subscribe like and share this is your assignment you have to tell me what is this renal anemia and what is this small breathing which is seen in ckd patients these are the friends thanks a lot